Ana Trafalas and I work for the Athens Institute for Education Research, which is a world association for academics and researchers. I'd like to welcome you to Agner's interview series, where we interview the participants which attend our many conferences and Athens present their work. Then I'm going to be interviewing Dr. Tom Reinhardt, who is a professor at the University of Georgia in the USA. Hello, welcome to Athens. My <laughs> pleasure. So, uh, give us a brief academic introduction of yourself. Uh, well, I'm a professor and department head at the University of Georgia. We've been there for 13 years. Um, uh, uh, and uh, really pleased to be here. Okay, so what's your major current area of research? Well, I'd say for the last uh, 25 years or so, I've been very interested in the uses of sexual information for persuasive purposes, uh, mm -hmm. especially in the marketing and consumer product domain. Mm -hmm. So tell us about your uh, presentation that you're going to present. Right. Uh, so I uh, worked with some colleagues uh, to test some assumptions about the uses and effects of sex and advertising. Mm -hmm. Specifically, we're looking at um, uh, you know, how uh, sex and advertising attracts attention. Mm -hmm. And we used uh, eye tracking uh, methodology for this project. So mm -hmm. we're able to actually not just use indirect measures, but look directly at where consumers are looking when they see uh, erotic ads. Okay, so how does the use of erotic imagery um, impact the attention of the user? Okay. Yeah, well, interestingly enough, uh, the assumption is, is that sex grabs attention. What mm -hmm. we found is that it doesn't, as an, as an overall appeal, it doesn't grab, grab attention. But it's the uh, sexual information in the ads that certainly does um, monopolize attention. Uh, so when somebody's looking at an ad, mm -hmm. uh, that's what they're going to go to. Uh, and there is some detriment to memory for brain information. I think that does confirm a lot of thinking in the area for the last 25 30 years. Okay, so what differences do we see in the attention of the viewer through the eye tracking? Yes, like, yes. Well, you know, uh, for many years, uh, I think uh, this is the first eye tracking study that, mm -hmm. uh, that's been conducted, uh, at least scientifically. Uh, so what we're seeing is that uh, uh, attention definitely is directed toward the sexual information mm -hmm. in the ad. Uh, that is confirmed, mm -hmm. uh, and they're not spending as much time uh, reading the messages in the end. So they'll uh, remember what they see, but they won't remember who the sponsor was or any information about the product. Okay. So are there di differences depending on the gender? There are differences there are. depending on the gender, okay. absolutely. Uh, similar, similar though, uh, men, obviously, the stimuli we used were uh, what you would typically see in most advertising, which were uh, images of women. Uh, and so men, obviously, are much more attracted to that, which you would expect to see. Yeah. Uh, but women also spent uh, an inordinate amount of time uh, looking at those images as well. Okay, interesting. So how would you introduce the actor, and what made you attend the conference? Uh, that is a good question. Uh, one of my former colleagues, Yorgo Pasadeus, uh, has been involved with this conference in the past, and uh, that's been for many, many years. And uh, also, I have a special place in my heart for Athens. I, uh, oh, so it's not your first time here? No, no. Okay. I traveled here when I was a graduate student mm -hmm. uh, for a couple months, and then we spent a month here for our honeymoon. So oh, okay. that was a long time ago, but wanted to get back. Uh, and also was very excited to see that there was uh, a, a couple sessions mm -hmm. uh, around this research that we think is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much.